Welcome to episode 7 of Tornado Facts with Beanrock 124. Today, this outbreak hits pretty close to home again, just like the last one, except this time it's even closer to home. Now, before I start the video, I'm going to have a disclaimer. There's going to be beeping in the background. It's going to sound like beeping. It's my dryer that's right next to my room going off. Fun. So on June 13th, 1976, one of the largest and most violent ever uh, tornadoes ever recorded in Iowa moved in between the cities of Ames and Boone during the afternoon of that day. The tornado began southwest of the small town of Luther, Iowa, a little before 3.30 p.m. and moved to the north-northeast. The tornado strengthened and grew larger at some points more than a mile wide as it approached U.S. Highway 30 at the intersection of... Uh, uh, That's one of them, of Iowa Highway 17. The tornado turned turned toward the north with the small hamlet of Jordan, Iowa, in its path. A small satellite F3 tornado formed on the southwest side of the main tornado and moved around the back side into the east of the tornado around 3.40 p.m. before emerging back with a parent storm north of Jordan by 3.50 p.m. The small hamlet of Jordan was raked by the, by the half-mile-wide F5, destroying everything, nearly everything in its wake. Now, you can read the rest of this, and here's something I'd like to say here. Ted Fujita always said, after he investigated a devastating tornado, always, ha this is what I've seen, always said this tor the tornado was the most severe and extreme he had ex ever examined, besides the other ones he's examined. I don't understand. Now, at the same time that the supercell that produced the Jordan tornado, another supercell formed, producing a mile-wide F4 near Lamont, Illinois, causing two fatalities and 23 injuries. The outbreak as a whole killed two and injured 35. Now, speaking of Lamont, let's talk about that tornado. Now, I couldn't find something like this for the Jordan tornado, except the only thing I found was this. And we all know everything about that. So... Of course, June 13, 1976, the area had been experiencing a very warm period with a high of 94 degrees being observed the previous day in the Chicagoland area. With the afternoon temperatures hovering in the lower to mid-80s, little would be known that in just a few minutes after 5 p.m., sudden chaos was about to strike, the southern du strike southern DuPage and southwestern Cook counties, or right in this area. A strong tornado developed across the Lamont area at 5.18 p.m. just north of downtown. If you didn't know, Lamont is located right here. This is downtown Lamont in this area. So it would have been probably somewhere in this general area right there. From this point, the tornado began taking a rather erratic track, first heading southeast through the extreme, through the eastern sections of town. The tornado grew more ferocious during this time, causing extensive damage at the Hillcrest subdivision which is located right here along McCarthy Road, right here, just east of Lamont High School. From there, the storm began heading in a northerly direction, or this way across the Des Plaines River, and hit, hit and tore off the roof of an Aragon, or Argonne National Laboratory reactor. I always say Aragon because I'm so used to the, that ballroom in Chicago. The tornado then crossed I-55, right here, I believe, right at Cass Avenue, if I'm correct. Um, where inflicted more damage on homes before, before finally dissipating. Those homes in question, here in the town of Darien, along Plainfield Road, between Cass Avenue and Lamont Road, I believe. The tornado track was 8 miles long with a width of up to 800 yards wide, or just less than a half a mile and total damage approached $13 million. Uh, the final rating was an F4 on the apparently now called Enhanced Fujiti Scale. Don't know what that means. There were two anticyclonic tornadoes that were, rota uh, that were rotating around this parent tornado during the tornado. And the tornado was on the ground nearly an hour. However, the tornado track was about 8 miles. So, uh. Further research of the storm indicated that the storm was nearly stationary for a period of, the, for a period in the tornado's life cycle, ultimately, ultimately contributing to, to such the short distance traveled. Now here's a picture of the tornado. It's stretched out for some reason, 
but I could show you a, I believe, correct image. So they're saying near McCarthy Road from one. Okay, so this is when the tornado was near McCarthy Road on 127th Street, which is. So if the McCarthy Road is here, I believe that they were facing this way. The image was facing to the northeast, I think. Um, there's actually a couple videos I want to show for this one. First is this one. Links for these videos will be in the description below. Here at Lamont, Illinois, two people died and 170 homes were destroyed. The Lamont and Jordan tornadoes, although 250 miles apart, both occurred on the same day. Both took unusual turns. And both were accompanied by anticyclonic tornadoes. They were among the many storms whose damage was investigated firsthand by the acknowledged master of aerial and ground observations, Professor Fujita. Okay, so that's video number one I wanted to show. Here's video number two. Nearly obliterated by a... In 1976, the town of Jordan, Iowa, was nearly obliterated by a monstrous tornado. As it moved along an unusual V-shaped path, it was accompanied by another large anticyclonic tornado, the second to be filmed in about a year. The Freedom and Jordan anticyclonic tornadoes remain as the two best examples ever photographed. Here at Lamont, Illinois, two... Okay, that one's the exact same, so I'm sp I didn't... I realized I should have just had one video open. So, that is pretty much it for Episode 7 of Tornado Facts with BNOC124, covering the crazy day of June 13th, 1976. So, with that, thank you for watching, and goodbye.